Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Jay. And this is a Halloween Kills update. How come you kill him but not me? <laughs> <laughs> sort of an update, sort of just something we wanted to talk about. The update stuff's gonna happen kind of quick, and then the rest of the stuff we're gonna talk about kind of deals with the franchise as a whole. Yeah. But we'll get started. We'll get the updates up in you real quick. <laughs> Show we? Boom! You want a man who gets it done? I get it hey, done. It's like this. Boom! Can I get a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> So the first thing is Halloween Kills. There is a rumor going around that the poster is going to get released in this next week. That's a complete and total rumor with no official officials whatsoever. So hopefully that would be awesome. I hope the rumor is correct. I smell something. Bullshit. <laughs> no, well, it'd be cool if we get to see it, but it's, it's going to be interesting because <clears throat> are they going to have the mask in the poster? Because that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of people were wondering what the mask is going to look like. You know, they're guarding that shit like George Clooney guarded his bat nipples. So we don't know. But it'll be interesting. I don't think it'll be a week, though. Because you you got to remember, look, the movie doesn't come out until October. No. I mean, we're just now uh, sitting in, in, the, in the butt fart spray of April. So I think they're going to wait a little bit longer. So maybe June or July, I think, a poster drops. Well, compared to how the last movie released, the poster would have come out a week ago. They released that poster a week ago. But you have to remember, uh, with Halloween 2018, wrong. that poster was wrong. not just a poster, but it was also the official mask release of Halloween. Yeah. We all wanted to know what the new mask was going to look like. That doubled as a poster and the first showing of the mask we ever saw when it yeah. came out. But uh, I have heard also rumors about that. One, that it's going to be another mask, just a straight-up mask shot. Uh, but if it is a straight-up mask shot, that's cool with me, too, because we're going to see an updated look at the new. Ooh, I feel like I, I, I hope it's not. I really hope that they hold back on that. You you, you save your load for when the magic moment happens because I, I really think that that should be something that like right before the release. I want to because that'll hype you up more. I mean, I know it's cool to you know a few months away it'll hype you up about the mask and stuff, but yeah. I just want them to keep that kind of in the dark a little bit. And they and maybe even go with what they've done with because they have shown the mask in the short trailers that we've gotten, but it has been very very dark over top of it. You haven't got a full good look at it. I think that a poster would actually like be a really deep look and people would be changing the color. Yeah. Texture and all that shit. Contexture's not a word. Fuck my butt. Uh, but you know what I'm saying. Stinky like, down there. Maybe not do that and then just leave it for the movie, like you said. I've also, I want to see that burnt crisp. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a rumor going around that the mask, the, the poster's not gonna have anything on it. It's literally gonna say Halloween Kills 2021 yeah. on it. Uh, and and you know, fuck it. I'm down with some mystery in this world of uh, that we live in, where they give away everything at the drop of a hat. I'm down with. I'm know. down with OPP. Yeah, you, you know, know me. me. That's a rumor that's going on. Again, complete rumor. Just had to talk about it. We got discovered. <laughs> uh, sources. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's your sources? More of a Reddit thing, I think. Uh, what's your sources? Trust me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's the source. That's the truth. Uh, the other news, and this actually is news, NECA has announced that they are going to release a Halloween Kills mm. action figure. I like it. Uh, it's going to be Halloween Kills. If you go to these certain sites, you can actually pre... pre Break up! Yeah. You can pre-order it and... Uh, Get you excited. Yeah, uh, you can pre-order it. It's like $32.99. It says Halloween Kills 2021 Michael Myers 7-inch figure. All these points of articulation cool. and hey, man. whatever. NECA's a badass guy. I love NECA. Yeah, they do and, and by, well, You know, I gotta be honest. Uh, I love NECA. NECA really does bring the goods when they have the, bring the action. They bring all of that with their figurines. I, I they're they're cool as shit. I think they usually have like twenty seven points of articulation or something like that. Yeah. Don't roast me if I didn't get that right. It's a number. Yeah, but I mean, it's something out there. I just made it up and threw it out. Okay, did you not fucking watch CNN? Anyway, but yeah, it, it, they, they do have a lot of uh, articulation. And they, they look really good. The painting is always superb. I, I'm more of a Marvel Select guy myself. I think that kind of, Diamond Select. I think Diamond Select is like where it's at. But either way, a NECA doll, mm. a NECA action figure from from Michael Myers because I've only got um I'd fuck it. No, dude, honestly I thought I had like like you're like oh you have a little bit of time. <laughs> no I was doing uh, the uh, uh, Bill Paxton Twister the wind's changing. Oh yeah I'd fuck it. Yeah get Dorothy you stole my design you son of a bitch NECA coming out with a their own that's gonna be badass dude yeah. that shit's gonna sell like hotcakes. Yeah you know it will and you can pre-order it right now again 3299 I think it said it comes out September of 2021 so if you've got thirty two ninety nine in the bag, that's a lot of money for a neck doll. Though. You know, that's, gonna, that's a lot. I, I don't mean to call what they usually. Cost. I don't mean to call it a doll. It's a lot a, of money a collectible for us. action figure, dick. Kind of like a forty year old virgin. It's like you have toys, a collectible action figure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm like I have, I, I collect action figures too, and I have all mine in the box. They're pristine, yeah. and I don't like it when someone else calls them dolls or toys. That's bullshit. Yeah. And you don't, don't ever talk. You don't say that. You don't say that. But yeah, it, it, but it, yeah, dude, that's exciting news. Uh, and I was actually asking him before we went on. 
the, the, one of the biggest mistakes, and it can happen, if an image was leaked of the Michael Myers doll, because they would give away the mask. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Because yeah. it actually has happened, uh, if you go to Walmart, uh, or, 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 or like Walmart's website, uh, for certain toys for like the Avengers Black Widow or something like that. They showed the Taskmaster yeah. way too early. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, yeah. those, whoa. Those internet sluts will go out there and they'll, internet sleuths, the internet sleuths will go out there and, and they'll find that You shit. were doing so good. And then all of a sudden you showed the girl your dick and it was so small and ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that for? You gotta keep them separated. Yeah. Uh, but that's the, that's, the, that's the Halloween Kills news. That's the real legit 100%. Uh, as far as the franchise goes, we haven't had a chance to talk about this. It's about a week old. Someone brought it up to us in the, uh, uh, and we're gonna go to a dark place now, friends. Uh, we're gonna go to a dark place. Let's go there. Grab you a drink. Um, I live there. Someone mentioned this. I'm gonna be Edge Lord. I live there. <laughs> <laughs> I live there. <laughs> uh, the fucking cr the Cure song comes on. Dum dum dum. No, I, I just think of those people that get like you know they just really like paint themselves up and like nobody understands my world. <laughs> <laughs> like shut the fuck up and get a job. Get some sun. <laughs> Happens to me every time. Go have sex. Uh, but and again, by the way, this uh, this is a good time to bring this up. We heard in our stream last Friday, uh, we stream typically Wednesday and Friday nights, uh, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern. Someone brought it up in the chat. They were like, what did you guys think about the Tony Moran oh, thing? Oh, man. About Tony Moran just going fucking buck wild Charlie Sheen, but in a like totally like awful way and not like a cool, it wasn't even funny. crazy way. And then I watched the actual video. Um, but it's a good time to bring this up, by the way, Friday night. We are having Daniel Farrens, the writer of Halloween 6. Ooh one of our favorite Halloweens, The Curse of Michael like Myers, is going to be joining the show. That's going to be awesome because we fucking love that mm. movie. We can't wait to talk to him about it. But he also directed Never Sleep That's Again, which great. to me is the greatest horror really documentary is. of all time. Dude, I remember uh, when that first came out on YouTube, I literally, I, like, I literally put myself in a dark hole for seven hours yeah, and dude. just watched everything. It's beautiful. I, I, yeah, I looked up, like... My asshole had been asleep for three days. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and he, dire he directed Crystal Lake Memories, yeah. uh, which is great because everybody, it's like that scene in Ted where he's like, hey, are you going to come over and watch the uh, Chia's documentary? Mm -hmm. I heard they all talk shit about each other. He's like, yeah, I'll be right over. Um, Crystal Lake Memories, they talk shit about each other. It's a great time. He directed that. We're going to talk about him about his horror direct. Uh, what? <laughs> Not, you know what? One of the main things I also want to ask him about Never Sleep Again is like, how did you feel when that one director from uh, Freddy 2 was talking dog shit on Wes Craven? Like, I, I thought it was stupid. <laughs> like, did you like, did you like, were you like, uh, like drinking a cup of coffee and like when you, and he said that, you're like, oh. <laughs> did you, or did you go like, did you get really excited? Like, yeah. He probably looked like the dude who was interviewing Tony Moran. That was like, oh. No, I, I, yeah, I thought, I thought it might have been one of those situations though where you're like, one or two things that either happen, you're like, oh shit, that's not going to go over well. Or you're like, god damn, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is like Jerry Springer. Yeah, uh, but he directed that. He directed a Scream documentary, which I watched last night. It's fucking awesome. But Daniel Farron's on the show Friday night. Be here. We're going to uh, let him answer some of your old's questions as well as ours. It's mm -hmm. going to be a great time. So make sure you subscribe, click the like button, click all that shit, and be here on Friday fucking night. Do you want to hang out? I want to hang out with you. Tony Moran, speaking about being weird. On to what we we're going to talk about. Sorry I went off on a weird uh, tangent. subdivision mm -hmm. there. Uh, Tony Moran... <laughs> Fuck. What a sack of diaper shit he was. Oh, God. Uh, you know, if you don't know, and I'm sure you do know yeah. if you're watching this, he played Michael Myers for about 4.8 seconds. <laughs> Which is exactly how long it takes me to get off. Not <laughs> even long enough to ride a bull successfully, as Luke Perry would have told you. Um, In eight seconds? Eight seconds. Fuck. Woo. Great goddamn great, movie, great man. Um, but... Uh, he played Michael Myers for about eight seconds, less than that. It was like two, three. Yeah, two, three seconds. He was the dude. He was Michael Myers' face. And he was that weird, Halloween. ugly fucking like. He looked like a mannequin with eyeballs. Yeah, like, that moved. It, like, my, it's the classic. Like she pulls his mask off and he goes. Eh. No, dude, he. That's that. it. This is the like. <laughs> like he like. <laughs> Like he he looked like he was on fucking cocaine when he pulled the goddamn mask off and thought he was living in a reality that wasn't real. Like he was like <laughs> he looked like he looked like he showed up for his 5 a.m. Uh, Hardy's job to make the biscuits in the morning Look, and like he was hungover and someone shined a light on him for the first time and he's like yeah. <laughs> Tony Moran looked like a bigger and thicker shape Richard Ramirez that the light had finally spotlighted him. Uh, but no, the thing is, look, okay. So what Mike was saying as far as the Tony Moran interview, there's yeah. links for it all over the place. Just type in Tony v Moran rant. Tony Tony Moran on Halloween, whatever, and you're gonna get tons of links pointing you the right direction. I'll put this, the link to the video. Yeah, this guy it. literally fucking insulted every Halloween fan out there by calling you pretty much fucking nerds, losers, and all this stuff. And by the way, this guy has so, you know, 
He did it in front of a room full of fans that had just paid money for his autograph, by the way. So I don't even know how he sat down to have the interview because his balls were so big. I don't even know how he was actually able to comfortably sit and talk shit. The thing about the worst thing about it, I think the worst travesty about it was the fact that when he was talking this dog shit, he goes on to say, uh, Halloween is a corny ass movie. He couldn't believe he was a part of it. He was just a very snarky motherfucker. He calls Tyler Mayne a cocksucker and his bitch. And he's insulting the fans literally, by the way, like 10 or 15 minutes before that, had paid money to get Tony Moran's autograph. Like, he's like, bro, uh, bro. Bro, like, this guy came up to me though, right? And I was like, I'm only in the movie for like two to three seconds, bro. And he wants my autograph and he's gonna pay me for that shit, bro. You're such a fucking, you know, F-A-G, which I'm not gonna say. Which, bro, you're just a nerd, bro. And I'm like, yeah, I signed it and shit like that. But I didn't even tell him. I was like, get a life, bro. <laughs> Just get a life. <laughs> I was like, but you took his fucking money, didn't you, dildo head? Because that, and, and, and the, and, it's and, ironic that you're talking like that because he looks like the human that, version of a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> I don't know where he gets these fucking gigantic balls from. Well, and the thing is, and, and what's worse is that the Halloween fans that's in the room, which is, you know, probably 25, 30 people, I don't know how many exactly were in the room, they're all chuckling and laughing like they're watching Full House and a, a, a funny moment just came on. I thought it was a laugh track, but it's really them doing it. And the poor... You're right, the poor interviewer, dude. We've interviewed some people. Luckily, we've had some great guests on. We've never been put in a position like that. But that motherfucker looked like he had super glued his teeth that were falling out and just had this permanent Joker smile. Because he was like... <laughs> like, he had nothing to say. Because what are you supposed to do? Like, what are you, you going to do? I, I've never poor seen guy, a man. more miserable motherfucker in my entire life. Why don't you just be happy with what you got and be you know, honored to be a part of such a, a successful and iconic franchise instead of insulting every fucking fan that pays money for it and then on top of that calling it a corny ass movie and act, acting like the biggest egotistical bitch I've ever seen in my life. Because first off, I wouldn't hire you for fucking shit. I wouldn't even hire you to fucking sell my hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> but you know, you look like you got a couple of them. You gotta taste it first. <laughs> and fucking herpes, you son of a fuck. <laughs> yeah, dude, like... Here's here's the thing. I, I, there's like several layers to this for me, and one of them is I actually it made me watching it. My my initial reaction was anger and and an obvious embarrassment, and then I actually just felt bad for him, dude. Mm. I honestly just felt bad for him. I don't know what's going on underneath his head. I don't know what's going on in his life. But to be that angry and that confused about the actual situation is insane. And, and, and here's the thing. This is crazy to me because I feel like it should start a conversation about how mm. we treat people who are in movies. Especially people at conventions. Mm -hmm. I respect a lot of the people that go to the conventions and the celebrities and the stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you're at a convention, a lot of times um, it's people who are in uh, movies that, that, that were popular or, or big deals. And they go on these basically world tours and people pay fifty sixty dollars for the pictures for their autographs and not to mention that the, 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 the convention itself pays them to come yeah well in some cases I'm sure they do I don't I don't know the, the, how that works behind the scenes but you know um, in a lot of these cases and and what Tony Moran said I actually part of it I understand not what he said about the fans but the fact that he originally said I could not believe that they told me people would pay for my autograph because I showed my face in a movie for five seconds mm -hmm. you know what Tony I agree with you there I don't know why anybody paid for your autograph. Personally, I wouldn't have paid $2 for your autograph because you were lucky. You were just a lucky dude who got your face shown in one of the most iconic films of 100%. all time. I wouldn't have paid $2 for it. I I'm happy. You, I'm I happy. you where the fucking parking lot was, you valet looking <laughs> motherfucker. He looks like a valet parker. I'm happy for Which you. nothing wrong with that. I'd be happy for you that you got that opportunity. I'd be like, cool, dude. That's awesome, man. What was it like to be on the set? I would not pay for their autograph. That's not me disparaging people who paid for the autographs, though, and that's the fucking difference. Again, I don't understand why the fuck anybody paid for your autograph either, Tony, but what I do understand is that these people, that just tells me that those people who do pay for your autograph are far more passionate than even mm -hmm. I am about, about Halloween, about the franchise, yep. and I respect that. I, I think it's fucking crazy tell that them, these I'm people not. love this movie so much that they're so passionate about it, and it means so much to them that they're willing to pay you, who were lucky enough to fucking show your goddamn face goo -goo -goo -goo, for two seconds for your autograph and your time and want to know what you have to say. Yep. That is a fucking positive on them that they love that franchise so goddamn much. So for you to go out and say and call them losers or whatever, you're just missing the fucking boat, bro. Well, and it's, it's sad. It, he finally got 
like, it's like, dude, what kind of bad day did you have? Did you pay for the stripper because that's the only way you can have sex? And then she told you how small your dick is and you were just mad before you got to the convention? That look, to I, I look, I mean, it does. But, I mean, I wouldn't take it out on the fans. No. Here's the thing. Mike's right. You were lucky to be in such an iconic film. And man, you were directed by John Carpenter, one of the greatest horror directors of all time. Instead of just running with that and being honored and proud, and yeah, a little shocked that people would want your autograph, but understanding how uh, passionate the fan base is and just being like, hey man, this is a really big thing. I'm, I'm really super honored to be here for that. No, you wanna go off and call people, you know, the, you know, uh, FAG and you wanna call them uh, nerds and losers and, and all this other stuff, cause you think it makes you look cool, bro. You sound like you're trying to audition for the Jersey Shore. Like you are a 67 year old Polly D. Shut the fuck up and go back and take your goddamn, uh, you know, uh, Viagra. <laughs> because you literally went in and you set, you shit in the mouths of people that had just paid you money to fucking get just a signature from you and made their day and you shit in their fucking mouth. You have no idea what was going on in that person's uh, life before they got to you. They could have had a dying mother, they could have had something really tragic happen to them and all they wanted to do maybe is just get your autograph and take a picture with you or something like that, get a couple kind words and that's all and that might have made their day, made them feel a little bit better but no, you decided, you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my dick right in their mouth and say fuck you. That's what's disgusting about yeah. that and on top of that, like dude, Mike and I, we're not, we're not huge or anything like that that, but dude, we are grateful for every fucking person that we have. We really are. And anybody that just wants anything from us, like we know that there are people ask for autographs, which I'm still, we're blown away that anybody wants anything from us as far as that's concerned. Dude, we'll take, if somebody is like, oh, you guys gotta sign a thousand fucking uh, wham posters, I'm like, dude, let, yeah, I'll do it. I'll fuck, and I'd be happy about doing it. And I understand that these celebrities have bad days when they come to conventions. Sometimes, you know, you're human and I get it, like bad things happen, but either you can reschedule that appearance or, you know, Nut the fuck up and shut up and do your job, which is go in there and just answer questions and be like a human being. That's another thing too. I'm really fucking just tired overall of hearing about convention horror stories. I, I'm, I'm really fucking tired of it. And, and, and I have to be careful with how I say this because I don't want to shit on every actor that goes to a convention. Yeah. I think conventions are so fucking cool and I love going to them. And I love that some actors who appreciate what they did and the opportunities they had, they, they love to meet the fans. I think it's an amazing thing overall. Yeah. But there is a percentage of these fucking people who go in there, they don't respect the fans, they don't respect their own careers and what they did and how lucky they were to have them. Yep. And they're there to f make fucking money. Yep. And you can sense it. You can sense it the second you fucking walk up and talk to him and it's bullshit it's really and disgusting and if and i say what, what people should start doing is they should say hey you know what you are lucky to be here you are lucky that these conventions these fans aren't the lucky ones you're the lucky ones yep. you are lucky that these fans care about you you are lucky that these conventions exist you are lucky that the sean clarks of the world put these rosters together that these people do all this shit you're very very lucky and that's not a bad thing to be lucky we're fucking lucky that anybody gives a shit what our dumbasses have to say yep. i'm not shitting on the actors i'm shitting on the ones who don't appreciate it and what we need to start doing is number one if i see tony moran on a, on on, the, on a roster at a convention after saying the fucking homophobic shit that he said and the, and, and the, the disgusting shit he said about Halloween and about the actors on Halloween and about Tyler Maine mm -hmm. and about the fans, I, 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 I'm just, I'm gonna be shocked as shit. I'm gonna be shocked as shit. I, I'm gonna, you I, don't deserve to be there. Yeah. You lost the scholarship, you can't go. I, I wanna walk by, I wanna be dressed as long as like, no, you're my cocksucker. <laughs> you're my bitch. Tony Moran, you're my bitch. You know what you do? You climb around on all four legs and you suck my cock. <laughs> Cocksucker. That's what, By the way, that's what he said yeah, about that's Tyler That's what he said. Mane. I'm not going to say that like, for real, but that's what he said. Yeah, literally calling, yeah. saying Tyler Mayne was his cocksucker and his bitch. Like, he was yeah. like, I was like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like, you are, you're not Michael, you, Michael Myers is Nick Castle. That's the way that it goes. But you, instead of you just running with what you got and being honored and happy with what you got, you got to go shit on everybody else for having portrayed Michael. And we yeah. have issues with Rob Zombie, for sure. Rob Zombie's Halloween, one, uh, Halloween remake we liked a lot, uh, except for the, you know, the, the backstory of Michael, it's very well cataloged. But Tyler Maine was always badass. We never had one word to say about Tyler Maine. The only thing I didn't like about Tyler Maine was the fact, and it wasn't even his fault, it was Rob Zombie in Halloween 2 having it look like a homeless fucking man walking with the railroad tracks. Yeah. And he looked, but he still looked good and he, he, he worked Michael really well in Halloween 1. But the fact that you come on, like dude, I, like, I really, I thought you were drunk or you were on drugs or something like that, but I saw your deep desperation, I've not had sex since 1975 face, and I'm like, you're telling the truth. This is how you actually feel. And I think that's why the fucking interviewer was just so shocked, because he didn't know that was gonna come out of and your fucking And he squared off to the interview, too. The interviewer was like, so there's two Michael Myers here, there's Tyler Mayne, there's you, and he's like, oh, oh there's two Michael yeah. Myers here? There's two Michael Myers here? It's like, bitch, no, there's one! Tyler Mayne has four more!
more of a stake to the claim of Michael Myers' throne than you fucking do. You were face for two goddamn seconds in a fucking movie. Not to mention the fact that this guy talks shit about fans, but then you go online and you see an ad. The true, or Michael Myers, Michael Myers actor will marry you for like two grand or whatever the That's fucking price is. He's out there marrying people as the real Michael Myers when, bitch, you weren't even the real fucking Michael Myers hey, Tony, the castle one. I wouldn't let you Stop. scan my fucking pedigree to check me out of the goddamn pet smart, you son of a fuck. Because here's the other thing, too, by the way. Uh, Tony Moran, and, and I'm just going to reiterate something. When he when he called Tyler Man, what we're talking about calling him his cocksucker and his bitch, he said it on a different interview, not the initial one that you... This video's might, got like eight... That, yeah, he has different. Yeah, he did it in a, a, a podcast with three other uh, poor schmoes that had put him on and didn't know he was gonna be so fucking venomous for whatever reason. <clears throat> and, there, and not, and it's not just the fact that he comes off as as a dickhead, but it's that he comes off as a pompous dickhead. Because he was talking about leaving the, I was leaving the corporate studio, and then I looked up and I was in this corny movie, Halloween. Whoa! I was like, this corny ass movie that's pretty much made me, uh, I don't know, the money that I need to have to pay my child support. Uh, this one corny ass movie that's probably made me more relevant than anything I've ever done except me fucking the brother of Joni Loves Chachi? You son of a. First <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, but does Chachi give a flying fuck about Joni? Am I, don't I know. right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, look, you know, I, I'm not going to rag on the guy all day. He's pretty much dug his own grave. Like, the backlash that this guy is going to get is, is, is already getting is insane. And, you know, I think a lot of conventions from now on are really going to double take whether or not even they book him. I hope so. Because of the way he acted. And, and even if they do book him, like, it, there's going to be a lot. <laughs> book him down, though. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like the fucking Reaper from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. <laughs> book him. Uh, I, I think that what's going to happen, though, they might try to avoid any kind of confrontation because listen Mike and I are passionate Halloween fans there's a lot of you guys that are super passionate but then there are passionate guys that are goddamn bodybuilders or there are people that will knock you the fuck out yeah. and like if you talk and maybe they, they the convention will want to avoid any kind of confrontation because you know there could be a very well a situation that occurs that someone will be like I'll pay the money to stand in line and, and talk to him and as soon as they get up here it's like you look like you suck dick for a living motherfucker and it's like I don't want your honor I'm just going to look at you and say you're ugly as fuck and nobody likes you and then that's going to be it and then and all of a sudden you have this big blow. I mean, that's probably what they want to avoid because yeah. you never know. But yeah, man, like I think that Tony Moran has just really fucked himself on this. I don't even if he came out with an apology, dude. I think what's I think what the problem is is that you were trying to be a tough guy. You were trying to be an awesome badass dude. That I don't care, bro. That I'm in the fucking movie. I don't care. I, what uh, what other movies are you known for? You son of a fuck. I don't even know what they are. And look, like, and here's the thing. If he was saying this from uh, 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 an office space of, of the place where it was his new job, and this is just how he felt, because he's even talked shit about John Carpenter. He says horrible things about a lot of people on the cast. Yeah. Um, uh, he said he said that Jamie Lee Curtis was fucking everybody in the room. He said all sorts yeah, of yeah, things. Yeah, also, really quick, he better be careful with that because that's slanderous and a lot. Of, unless yeah. you have like proof, you can get yourself in some deep and this legal is, shit. This isn't me grandstanding for a bunch of people I don't know. What offended me was what he said about the fans. You know what I mean? That's and that's yeah. what offended you too. I know. Uh, but if you're saying this from a corporate office or from a fucking Lowe's or whatever, and you're not at the convention actively right. fucking taking uh, money from these you. fans, yeah. say what the fuck you want to say, man. Nobody will give I a get shit. That. Yeah. But you're here at these conventions. You're on the circuits. You're advertising for yourself. You're taking fucking money, hand over fist, from mm -hmm. these fans who. You are so fucking lucky. Give a shit that you exist. He's delusional. And I actually feel bad. I don't even want to, like, I almost didn't even want to make this video, dude, because I hate to, like, pile on anybody. I, I hate to do that. Yeah. I think that the guy actually has, I think there's a problem there. I think there's something else. We I, don't know I, no, I, I, so I, I would accept that. I mean, if I, it was heartfelt, if he came out and said, look, I was drunk, maybe I had an alcohol problem and I was drinking too much, whatever the situation was, and he said, I, I do appreciate all this. I was having a real time, bad time in my life. I'll say right now, I would, if, if you, if it was heartfelt and you believed it, I would accept that. I'm also not one to ask anybody for an apology. Right. You don't want to apologize? Don't apologize. Go fuck yourself. Live with the results of whatever it was you did. Right. I don't want to damn the guy forever for life because he is a human being and human beings go through problems and they say stupid shit. It fucking happens. Yeah. It happens to some I, good I, people sometimes. I'd but. agree. I'd agree with you 100% except the fact that I don't think anything was wrong with him. I really think... I, I literally... Doesn't seem like it. I literally think an ego was his problem and his ego has always been the problem and this just got to showcase it. Look... 
I'm all I'm all for it, and I agree 100%. I've done stupid shit, and I've said stupid shit. Mike's done stupid shit and said stupid shit. It happens. I mean, you know, we're human. You make mistakes. You apologize for it, and you move on. But that doesn't mean that you don't suffer the consequences for what you fucking did. I mean, people can forgive you, but now you got to suffer the consequences. You're free to say and do whatever the fuck you want to do. No one's stopping you from doing it. This is American. You can do those things. But there are consequences at the end of that rainbow, sweetheart. And now you got to you got to fess up to them, and you got to confront them, and you're going to have to deal with them. And something now, tells me he won't. No, I don't, because I don't think anything was wrong with him. I think he was just being an asshole. And what I think honestly happened is because he was getting kind of uh, agged on by the crowd laughing like this was hilarious that he was just going off and he was calling Which is one of the things that nerds. actually make me kind of feel bad like he thought that they liked this so he yeah. kept doing it and once he heard that laughter dude it's like yeah, it's like it, something turned him up and, he got juiced. Yeah, it, and then he started saying even more outlandish shit and he thought he right. was giving the people what they wanted again which is why i sort of feel bad i don't know it, bol it bolstered say, his shit it bolstered it yeah. bolstered his ego again his ego is the problem the fact that he even fit in the fucking room is a goddamn miracle it's like asking yeah. god can you make a stone that's unmovable i don't know well ask tony moran because he fucking did it his ego was so unmovable he, he somehow managed to get it in the room Look, if he was just a regular cashier motherfucker working at Staples trying to sell me a coupon for the next, you know, uh, goddamn printer, and he was mad about people coming up and saying, hey, weren't you the guy that was in the Halloween movie? I'd get yeah. what you're saying. 100%, I'd be like, if he wanted to go off about it on Twitter or, or rage about it one time, I get that because it's like, hey, man, you're not even actively trying to, you know, get anything for your, your role in that movie. Yeah. And you're mad about people approaching you and you're working, you know, your shitty job at Staples, which nothing wrong with Staples. I like Staples, but I'm just saying. But the fact that he's not doing that, yeah. and he's making money doing this, and again, we don't know how much money he collects. I mean, I'm just going to say, if they're, you know, based on, like, the H40 convention that happened a few years ago, how many fans, super fans, turned out for that, and those are the kind of people that are paying a lot of money to be there, and they probably wanted to hit all the tables up that they could to get as many people that were worked on the original one, and he's sitting there. That motherfucker could have easily made a, a grand or tw or four or four or five thousand dollars in a day. Yeah. And, and for doing nothing but doing a movie that he thought was corny and stupid and the fans are nerds. That's awesome. And I think what offended me more than anything else, even more than him talking shit about the fans to their faces about them paying him for his autograph. It's one, And again, it's one thing to say, hey, I can't believe people want my autograph. I think it's wild. Yeah. It's crazy. But to call them losers and, <clears throat> and say the shit that you said is another thing. But what actually offended me that I would have the hardest time forgiving him for is, and he may not want anyone's forgiveness, and he probably doesn't. He probably doesn't give a fuck. Um, he probably just feels like he got away with murder, but because he said corny, uh, <laughs> he doesn't know corn. <laughs> what, what really bothered me was the We're way corny. he talked to a couple of the interviewers. Like he literally yeah. in, tried to intimidate them. Mm -hmm. uh, he tried to intimidate them the way he would like turn. And I've seen that crazy look in people's oh, eyes yeah. before when they do that. What'd you just say? And you, know, you just you said yeah. something completely normal, like, "Hey, I like I like uh, I like pop tarts." He's like, "You like? Oh, you like pop tart? Yeah. You you, you like? Did you just?" No, I, say, it, say, it again, say it again for me. You you, you like Pop-Tarts, huh? Uh, and then you're like, I don't know what the fuck like, I just did to this I, guy. I, I would be like, I, I, like, I like strudels. <laughs> like, like, uh, he I was, like strudels. <laughs> he was doing that. He was doing that fucking, like, hover yeah. over, uh, attempt to intimidate yeah. people who were just trying to be nice and show love to him. And that's the fucking part that I, I can't you, fucking stand you know what, that in people. You, it yeah. puts me on another goddamn level. Hey, wait. Hey, man, and, and again, it goes back. And again, we're not like, experts here. And we're not trying to toot our own buttholes or anything like that that but you know it is really nerve-wracking when you interview anybody uh and we've got, you know got lucky enough to have really good interviewees and yeah. nothing like that's come up but it's really nerve-wracking and stressful because you want to ask the right question and make sure they're entertained and make sure that they're not bored and you're not asking them hopefully the same questions that they've been asked a million times so it's really shitty when a celebrity or somebody that you're really excited to talk to turns around and tries to do the intimidation factor and and make you scared and nervous even more than you are and and, and it also reminds me of, of, of goddamn a high school bully like flash gordon or something yeah. and be like goes i wouldn't want to fight me neither and then you want to kind of move around like peter parker i mean honestly at that point i don't know maybe i wouldn't be able to control myself I'd be like you know what if you don't want to do the interview motherfucker if you don't want to answer the question then fuck off. i don't care yeah. i mean whatever i mean i don't have to ask you these questions and you don't have to answer the question but you're trying to and i don't think he would have done it to anybody that looked like they could stand up for themselves it, like if, if somebody that could go back and give them back to him really quick yeah. i don't think they would have done it and, and also you got to think the interviewers are sitting in front of a bunch of halloween fans who seem to be agreeing with them so like I understand why the interviewers didn't do anything because it's like oh shit if I turn on him they're gonna turn on well, me. yeah he's like oh you what, what the one Michael Myers like yeah because I only saw your face for like three seconds yeah. I don't know if you're the real one I know like and again I, I'm I'm just gonna end it with this for me personally um, 
what what I, what I want to say is this like I, I don't want anybody to feel like they're condemned into the night and banned by the entire world and hated by fucking yeah, everybody. That sucks. because again there's a there is a chance here that there was something else going on that we don't know you never know what someone's going through in their own life so it, it always makes me kind of fucking back up when everybody jumps on one person at one time um, but I'll say this if uh, if Tony Moran comes out and, and, and he makes a statement and, 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 and he was to apologize or he was to explain himself or what he was trying to do or why he felt that, you know, I'm not, I, I, I hate to say, hey, everybody should go shit on this fucking guy because he's a human being and he's going yeah. through a hard time and obviously he has his opinions and even though they're might not yeah, right, you don't way, know what's going on. Let me cut you in really quick. Don't, do not go, for us, don't go and pile on this guy's Twitter yeah. or, or say mean and hateful mm -hmm. things, okay, because we're not, we're not condoning that. At all. No, and I, and I don't, you know, for the chance that even he's out there watching this, uh, it's it's not like a, this guy's a piece of shit and he'll be up forever be a piece of shit and he should just go fuck off for eternity. It's not that. It's, 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 if he's not going to come out and make what he said right some way mm -hmm. and he's still going to show up and take money from fans, yeah. that's a fucking problem. Right. But if he wants to come out and he wants to explain what he was saying, uh, uh, apologize whatever then you know I'm not we should all listen I think we should all fucking listen you know I, I, I don't want to damn the guy to eternity I, I don't want to do that to anybody because the world's a fucking weird place and your mind's a weird thing and he could have just made a fucking mistake and done it over and over again because when you're making a mistake in front of a group of people who are all cheering and laughing yeah. you think you're doing something right true so and there's two sides to this and I know we gave him shit and he gave other people shit and hopefully he can understand it's that like, if he it's watched it's like he was, he was Chris Farley when he went he went like kill Whitey <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then exactly. Like, oh shit. So, so <laughs> let's remember this. This at the end of the day, this is this is a person who did some stupid shit and said some stupid shit, but he's still a person and I, and I hope that he'll come out and make his amends with the people that he's taken money from all this time. Yeah. Um uh, but at the end of the day, I, I hope it all ends up okay for him and I, I honestly I just kind of feel bad for him. I feel yeah, well, you know, it's weird for me. I, I feel bad for him in the in the you know, in the way that if if there was something wrong, um and, and he came out and he, he wasn't himself and he, he talked shit and he said things that he shouldn't have said and it got carried by every source it could be carried by and leaked out to everybody on Reddit, 4chan, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I mean, your goddamn mom's MySpace. Everybody knows now. And it could have been just one of those days that you were off. And I get that. That's possible. It's, it was several different days, though. Yeah, it was, comp it, was yeah. it was a compilation. So he's always been there. My problem is... And, and he could have been in a, like, I'm not even saying he could have been in a bad headspace on each one. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, like, even if you were, again, it goes back to, you got to pay for what you fucking say. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, again, you, there, you, it, you, you play the game, it's time to pay the piper at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way that it works. That's the way the world goes around, and, man. And, and, and while I feel bad for him, you know who I feel worse for right now? I feel worse for the guys, for the dudes who stood in line and told him how much they appreciated yeah. him and paid money for his autograph um, thinking that he gave a shit. Right. I feel worse for all the people watching this video right now who paid money for his autograph knowing that he was sitting there calling him a fucking loser behind their back or maybe even to their no, face. No, I mean, well, that, that was my point is the fact yeah. that this guy literally spit in your face and you said, so may I have another while you laughed and joked and thought it was funny. It's not. He was literally making fun. Uh, if you go to a high school and, and a lot of, you know, like you, I've been bullied and shit like that. You understand what that's like. That's like when you're trying to uh, like, if someone's making fun of you in high school and you just you, you start laughing to try to go along because you think that maybe if I laugh with them, they won't laugh at me. But no, they're making fun of you. They're doing it to your face. Yeah. They're making you look like shit and they're doing that as, to a, uh, to prove a point. Like I can, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this guy is exactly like that. He's an egotistical asshole that needs to be brought down a, a peg or two. And I'm glad that this video came out because it shows his true colors. Now again, I'm not saying that he might not have been in the right headspace or something might have occurred or something else that he was just really upset about and was taking it out in, a, in the wrong way. There's retribution for everybody, right. but but he needs retribution for what the fuck he did. Right. Anyway, good luck to you, Tony. I hope that you're, uh, you know, I hope that that thing on your lip clears up one day. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> we love your fucking faces. Thanks for coming. Click like, subscribe, do all that cool shit, and we'll see you guys Friday night with Dana fans from Halloween 6.